Hello, my name is Clive and I'm trying my absolute best to rebuild this gaff cutter Andromeda built here in the UK on the East Coast. I've got to the stage where I'm rebuilding the rudder, I'm making a new rudder and uh, I've done a lot of the woodwork but I need to fit um, the bearings in layman's terms. Uh, on boats these are often referred to as gudgeons and pintles, uh, you know pins and sockets if you like. So we've got two gudgeons up the top here and a pintle lower down on the old rudder. I've got to try and let these into the new rudder. Now these straps do a lot to support the rudder blade and the stock up here which is great. They are let into the rudder to try and create a kind of flushed finish so that they don't stick out and I've got to try and replicate those recesses in the new rudder and I also have to make sure that they fall perfectly in line um, you know on an angle from from this point of view as well as from this point of view uh, to make sure that the rudder hinges perfectly so I've got a few ideas about how I'm going to do that uh, there's no guarantees that the front of the new or the old rudder stock is perfectly straight so I just have to take that into account when I'm trying to line these up these old straps were bolted on with hex head bolts that stuck out of the side of the rudder blade here and lower down quite far. Um, a friend of mine has talked about the idea of you know these straps being traditionally fastened with copper rod that's sort of mushroomed over. Uh, these are the old um, fastenings that were used to hold the cheeks on the rudder stock up here. In the last video uh, you will have seen a photograph of me cutting these off to remove the old rudder stock so that I could take this gudgeon out at the top here. Uh, I'm going to try and use these copper rods because there's nothing really wrong with them and they fit really nicely just about through these holes here. So I'm going to try and use these to create the mechanical fastenings for these straps on the new rudder. Um, so that's something that, you know, it's good to recycle these copper nails because there, there are a lot of them there and they're really very chunky. Okay, I've, I've lined up the rudder, old versus new, as best I could. Uh, and I've, I've, you know, drawn some lines on here. I've measured this. I actually used a punch that only just fitted through this. Okay, and I've gone through the holes here and marked on the new rudder where those holes fall. That then has allowed me to lay this in line with those holes, draw around it. Uh, I've used a T-square to sort of double check things and I'm pretty confident that my pencil mark on this new rudder underneath is now exactly where it needs to be. So the next thing I need to do is route out this uh, recess either side and cut this piece off the front. So I'm going to set the router up with a bit of a template to be able to make that cut um, and then I probably will use Japanese saw I reckon just to cut this section off the front here. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. So I'll get the router set up with the fences and the guides and that sort of thing and then we'll make a start on making a cut and seeing how it looks. tell by eye that that curve at the top there wasn't just quite right but I'm not too worried about that because I've got to bed these down anyway and remove a bit of wood from the back of the rudder stock there so um, 
I feel like that top curve might, might be exposed anyway, so uh, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, so I'm going to flip the rudder blade over. I'm happy with how that fits in there now. Um, tricky bit now is to try and replicate that on the other side of the rudder stock um, and then remove the wood from the front and see if this uh, gudgeon slides in place. Um, quite happy with how it's fitted into there though. So that, that is good. Okay, so things appear to be going okay, but you never really know. Obviously, until I line it up on the boat, I won't really know. But that sort of drops in there, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, whether this is the correct angle, it's very hard to tell. Um, don't really know. Lined it up with the old rudder as best I could, and I know that that swung freely. So, if I can replicate this, then it should swing freely. All I've got to do is because you'll notice when I slide this on, it doesn't drop all the way into these holes, it needs to drop down about another 15 mil. So, all I've got to do now is cut across here and remove a piece of wood. And this is the first uh, outing for this Japanese pull saw that Hannah got me for Christmas. So, um I've not really used these much before, but the idea is that the blade is very, very thin. So it removes a small amount of wood and makes a nice cut. Um, I could use a tenon saw, rip saw, something like that, um, but I just want to have a go with this really to get a nice clean cut on it. So we'll give that a go and see how it goes. routed out the front of the stock uh, up to those cuts that I made. I just freehanded it because I'd cut the edge, so that was quite nice. A uh, bit of filing to get some sort of crap off this gudgeon, really, and a bit of filing to make it fit. And I'm really happy with how that's dropped in there. Um, it's lined up with the holes that I drilled. Um, I drilled those holes so that I could then lay the strap on the other side of the rudder, line it up with the holes and see where I'd have to make the recess cut. But that's a really tight fit. You know, there's no movement on there at all. And in addition to that, um, you know, it's a really snug fit and it fits into the recess that I've made really nicely. If I grab the gudgeon that's going to go on the transom, this one here, um, it slides up onto that pin and it just about clears the rudder stock and it can swing all the way around. Um, so I'd say there's maybe seven mil between the front of this and the front of the rudder stock. So that, that's good, that's nice. You know, that's where it's meant to sit. Had a coffee, had some lunch. Got my hat on, tried to warm myself up a bit. Had a bit of a think. And uh, before I do that bottom strap, route out all the woodwork, uh, I want to have a look at these these fastenings, okay? So this, this is what I'm working with. Okay, these copper nails are what I took out of the cheeks of the old rudder. It's quite a chunky copper rod, so what I'm going to do is just cut the ends off, give it a bit of a wire brush, and then have a go using a ball peen hammer to fit it. And uh, what I've got here this is your kind of typical ball peen hammer. You know, you bang in the nail with that end, you round it over with that end. Uh, while I was doing the planking on Andromeda and, and re-fastening, I bought this, this bad boy, uh, which is a really hefty version. Um, so I think if I can get something metal under it, so 
this, this lump hammer, for example, if I lay that on the desk, uh, lay the rudder on top of it, I can use this ball pin to, to round over that copper. But we'll clean up these copper rods. I need three nice clean copper rods and then we'll see where we go from there and see if we can use that as a method to fasten that top strap into the stock. Okay, thank you for watching. As always, the support uh, and the comments and feedback that I get from everybody is really, really amazing. Uh, I wouldn't be able to do this on my own without the advice from everybody out there that's kind of helping me through this. As I've mentioned before, I'm not a professional in any way at all. I'm just kind of working this out as I go, and it's, it's a really fun learning process for me. So thank you for all of the support over the years. Remember, if you like what you see, if you hit that subscribe button, and also click on the bell, then you'll be notified every time there's a new episode so that you won't miss out on any future episodes.